book, as you said in the intro, takes a look at um, state attacks, and we chose to start with Nebraska because that's really where the onslaught of model legislation originates, um, and um, not just with the 20-week ban, but also um, as the book chronicles with what was really the um, initial architecture of the challenges, and that was the so-called partial birth abortion bans, and focuses on why Nebraska um, in the first chapter was a good place for that, given the local politics on the ground and the structure of the state government there. Who is the force behind this trend across the country? Um, well, there's uh, there are several groups, um, and they are legislative uh, and policy groups, and then also legal arms of those groups. So we have um, National Right to Life, we have Americans United for Life, and then um, uh, legal advocates along the lines of Liberty Council and the Thomas More Center, um, groups that um, really have coordinated and consolidated resources and efforts with one single goal in mind, and that's to um, either overturn Roe v. Wade and recriminalize abortion or to make it um, absolutely impossible to access and therefore legal in name only. And what are the links to Citizens United? Um, oh, so that's a fantastic question. I'm glad you asked that. One of the reasons why the book um, looks at the onslaught of legislation after 2010 is because there um, is an explosion at the state level, and, and that is in large part due to one of the driving forces, which is James Bopp Jr., who is uh, the legal brains uh, behind the challenge that created the Citizens United decision. Um, he sparked, um, and, and his group, National Right to Life, sparked a lot of the initial um, campaign finance challenges and um, did so uh, through uh, socially, culturally conservative groups. Um, and as a result of the unrestricted spending um, at the state level, uh, it's just, well, this is where we're at right now as a result of it. Robin Marti, if you could talk about the TRAP laws, that's the Targeted Regulation of Abortion mm -hmm. Provider Laws, otherwise known as the heartbeat bans. Um, Actually, the heartbeat bans and the trap laws are two completely different sets. What we're looking at is how there are a variety of tiers of ways of going after abortion regulations. Um, in one case, you can ban abortion at different periods of time. So we see the 20-week bans. We see heartbeat bans, where you can ban abortion at the point in which a fetal heartbeat can be detected, which can be as early as six weeks. Um, a lot of those, we don't think, especially heartbeat bans, will survive legal challenges. But on the other hand, we have so many states, um, especially in the Midwest and through the South, that only have a few clinics left or even just one clinic. And what targeted abortion of regulation providers do is they put unnecessary regulations in place. Either you will need to rebuild your entire structure, which is very costly, or there are admitting privileges that doctors need to go to, even though in the rare case that there is a complication with abortion, if a woman goes to a hospital, a hospital is not going to turn her down and say, we're not going to treat you. But they put these in place because they act as additional barriers so that then they can go through and pull licenses from clinics and start to eliminate clinics one by one that way so there's no more resources for women to go. Jessica, very quickly mm -hmm. before we conclude, could you explain the title of the book, Crow After Row? Absolutely. So it's an uh, intentional um, hearkening to the civil rights movement in Jim Crow, and um, that's because what we're seeing is a series of state restrictions that is enabled and um, supported by a federal judiciary who has largely um, upheld these restrictions and, as a result, said effectively that um, pregnant people have um, a different set of, of health care um, uh, or a, have a different health care system that they can access um, as a result of it. So. <laughs>